Hey guys, this video is going to be a quick update on the MP5 trigger housing I've been working on. This is the latest, latest revision. Uh, first, let's do a function check. Uh, we'll then compare it to the previous model, and then we'll do a comparison of uh, to the HK design. And lastly, we'll go over what's, uh, what's left to do. So we'll, we'll put it on safe, make sure it's clear, and cock it in the process. On safe, it will not fire. On fire, it does fire, and reset. So yeah, um, when you have this together, the, the grip has moved forward slightly. Um, so when you actually hold it, it feels, uh, feels more balanced than the HK design. I, uh, I still can't quite reach the uh, magazine release button, but the paddle I could, I could reach. Um, I know I've seen some extensions out here, so you can just push it forward kind of like the CZ Scorpion. So that might work pretty well. I can reach, reach that pretty easily. So let's take this apart and I'll show you the changes I made over the previous design. Then we'll compare it to the HK design next. So to take it apart, you gotta take these two pins out first and then this guy. So let's take the bolt carrier out. And then what's neat with this, this design is that you can actually swing this down. So compared to the previous version, you can see I've got the trigger guard modeled, and I've also got the boss for the uh, the AR-15 pistol grip. This is the Magpul K grip, and it has a really vertical angle compared to most. On the previous version, actually I can probably get all three in here. I had to Dremel out the front of this to make it to make room for. This little guy, you can see sticking out on the on the Zenith pistol. Um, that, that goes right in there. I think that's to stop you from put, putting a full auto trigger pack in there. So on the first model that I did, I forgot to put that in there and had to Dremel it out. On this one, it's actually modeled in there. Second, I, I, on the, uh, the prototype that I had, the, the walls were the same dimension all the way up and down. Uh, for the Air 15, Fire control group you actually need uh, for it to work properly. You need um, a little more meat right there where the safety is. And so I modeled that in there. The reason you need, you need that is so that there's a place for the detent to go from the bottom side. And other than that, I also modeled this little curve right here, which you can see is right there. It's, it's a little tricky to do. I think I did an okay job. The measurements seem to be pretty good. So those are the changes over the previous design. There will, will be no test fire in this video because functionally it is the same. Compared to the HK, you can see that the, the grip is moved up slightly and forward, maybe three quarters of an inch. And the grip is also much more vertical, like we talked about. And the trigger is also moved forward significantly. And the trigger housing is if we line up the trigger housings, they're pretty similar size. I tried to keep kind of the same HK shape where the front is angled. Um, I don't know uh, what I forgot about this. I also forgot a little chamfer on the inside there. You can see it's a 90 degree corner. And there's chamfers everywhere else. Kind of, uh, so on this, there's no, there is no chamfer there. It's just 90 degrees. So I'll have to fix that in the next model. The other thing that's still missing is the uh, the ejector. So I'll show you the ejector on the trigger housing and on the HK trigger housing and then also on the where it goes on the bolt. So the ejector is this little guy right there. So when the bolt comes back it trips this half. This is actually one piece that goes down, pivots, and then comes back up. And spring loaded so it stays down. The bolt comes back and pushes it up. And when it goes up it engages this, this channel right here which is really shallow in the back and really deep in the front uh, in the bolt. So that's how the ejector works. Um, I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to implement it. I have a couple ideas I'm going to try out and that will probably probably be my next update for this uh, this video series and hopefully I'll have a really cool test fire video there. But if you have ideas um, on how I can make this work, uh, let me know. 
Um, and if you uh, if you know about the hammer, if if, if, the, if it's safe to put a flat hammer in place of where this curved one is, um, I just don't want any abnormal wear on on the on the back of the bolt here. I know the nine millimeter ARs they've got a problem with those. I think uh, they talk about like they're using a ramped bolt, which is preferable. So that's it for this video. Uh, next time I'll have hopefully a more exciting one with lots of test fire. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.